We're going to talk a little bit about video conferencing, right? And, and it's certainly not a new topic. It's been around for a long time. Um, anytime we can connect video up together, uh, even as something as simple as one video camera connected to one ca video camera. But uh, now, more days, we start talking about where else does video fit in. Um, how, you know, you hear the term telepresence. And you know that's one letter closer to teleportation. So uh, I think it kind of shows telepresence. Think of that as that whole immersion into the experience. It's not just about the camera and the, and the screen. It's about the lighting. It's about the furniture. It's about the look and the feel, all that kind of stuff. And the big question is, is it worth it? Is Has video come of age? Uh, now. To, to do that, it's kind of good to have kind of a pros and cons, let's talk about it, but I couldn't really find anyone who wanted to talk to me. <laughs> I guess that was the biggest issue. So I decided to invite a very special guest, uh, myself, and uh, we'll kind of have that conversation with uh, me, and uh, we'll, we'll see who wins, okay? Let's give it a shot. So Dave, uh, just you know, we're here talking about video. I know you have strong opinions on your uh, video, and uh, just wondering what, uh, how, how you want to, how did you want to start this? <laughs> this is going to be so easy, Dave. I mean, we've all walked through the halls at any customer, any building, and we see these cool, glorious rooms. And all of a sudden we walk in and there's not a single person in there. The room's dark. It's always dark because nobody's using it. Yeah, sure, a video's got a great ROI, but you can't get the ROI if nobody's actually using the stuff. You know, Dave, that's a really good point, and I think that's something that we need to think about is it's not so much the technology, and, and clearly there's an ROI. It's easy math. Uh, it doesn't get easier. Look at airplane tickets. Look at, at the, the amount of, t of travel time versus the, the, the hours uh, that you're actually being productive in a meeting. But the big problem of what, uh, what can improve with that is put the, the decision making of when do you use video and when do you use travel not at the people that are, are incurring the cost, but put it in, in your HR policies, put it in the department budgets. Say we are reducing the, uh, the, the business travel expend, expenditures that we can make and I want you to use video instead. Um, once you start mandating it and putting it within your actual business practices, then you can truly get some of the benefit and the ROI from video. Dave, that all sounds fantastic, but again, you walk into the room and you see this TV and you see this camera sitting on top and it's, it's an old plazer, you know, an old tube TV and it looks terrible and it's, you know you're not there. Yeah, okay, now what you just described for us right there, and it's fact, is what, what we traditionally call video conferencing. Something that's been around forever. I mean, this was hundreds of years ago, it seems, that we've been doing video conferencing. The new trend in video is telepresence. And telepresence is, a, is that change that they've talked about before of the whole immersion, the whole, the, the, the ability to sit down at a table and see the people at the other end of the table. It's all about the environment, it's the room, it's the lighting, it's the, it's the whole deal. Yeah, Dave, well, see again, I'm gonna win this thing because what you just talked about is a $300,000 per, per location scenario. No, I agree. This stuff is still kind of in that expensive range, but we're starting to see a whole lot more competitors coming into the market that are lowering, their, lowering those price points. But again, I'll, I'll still say that the ROI is there, provided that you're building it into the way you do business. That becomes a pretty easy concept. Okay, let's say that's all true, which I'm still not entirely on board with, but it's still difficult. I mean, boy, you gotta check in with somebody, and I, I know I've tried to work with some of those old video units, and they're, they're tough to get connected to the other side, and you know, if it's not easy to use, people aren't gonna use it. No, again, Dave, you're, you're a smart guy. You're one of the smartest people I actually know, but in this case, you're talking about five-year-old, 10-year-old technology. Nowadays, something as simple as, as video conferencing at the desktop, where I can walk in and I can put in, uh, you know, I, on my One X communicator uh, from Avaya, I've got video licensing, uh, I've got a webcam sitting on my laptop, I go and I make a regular phone call, add in a Polycom conference bridge, video conference bridge, and now getting as much as a six party conference is as difficult as pushing the conference button on your telephone. The same way you place a conference call then is the same way you do it with video. So you start definitely reducing the complexity of this and you start getting into it. But with the recession, with all of these other things going on, this is, this is reality. This is video, I think, is still coming of age. 
Dave, I don't know. A lot of times I think you're an idiot, but I got to admit, so this might be the time that this is actually happening. I, I agree. I've seen the competitors. I, I've seen the prices starting to drop. There's still bandwidth issues. Yeah, Dave, you're right again, but I think bandwidth starts coming in and bandwidth is becoming cheaper, right? Every new generation of Ethernet switching is working that way. I think video is the clear winner. It's come of age.